What's going on sports fans? Welcome to our very first installment of a new segment that I'm extremely excited about, mostly just because I get to be indoors and not getting sunburned again, but we're doing a, a little bit of a inside the commissioner's office. We don't really have a, a title yet for it, but this is Jerry Schneep, the commissioner of the San Diego section. So he is the head honcho of everything that ever happens at any high school sport event ever. Did I put enough innies and evers yeah, in that? That's probably more than enough. Okay, perfect. So what this is gonna be is every week, we're gonna get a chance to help the office and you guys connect on some of the hot button issues, some just general education because there's a lot of layers to, to CIF that I think a lot of people sometimes don't understand. You're absolutely right, Christian. I'm excited that, that we've got a forum to have conversations, to talk about tough topics, and, and uh, get information out from our office. So I'm hoping coaches, student athletes, parents, community members, everybody can, can be more informed when we do this. Yeah, I think you guys will be really surprised, like like you said, the, the the issues of the day, but it's also some of it is issues that, you know, we some sports need referees, some right. coaches need to learn how to properly turn in pay. Like it is such a wide ranging of topics that we could probably sit here and talk until the twenty nineteen season we about could, it all. We could do an hour a week. Um, but uh, but the phone is already ringing off the hook for this man anyway, so we'll try and get this done in just a couple of minutes. So I, I think that just probably the easiest place to start uh, that everybody is dealing with constantly is transfers. Sure. So right now, football season especially maybe gets a lot of the highlight, but it, it trickles over into basketball, baseball, lacrosse, field hockey. Everybody has to deal with some sort of, of an issue with transfers. So give us a couple seconds, couple minutes, whatever you want on, on what are some of the biggest maybe urban legends, miscommunications, misperceptions about a high school student transferring and still remaining eligible. Okay. So, so Christian, to start with, I want to say this, that I've said over the years that I've been doing this, the, the number of athletes changing schools has remained consistent. We've changed our rule once five years ago. We tweaked it again a couple years ago. But what's interesting is about 2% of the athletes who participate in sports in San Diego change schools, which means consistently over the years, 98% are staying at their school. So that 2% can cause a pretty big stir, you know. Um, but I, I think what's important is we put that in perspective first, that 68,000 athletes playing in San Diego, 2% of them change schools. So um, that's important. What, what I think what has changed over the last few years for sure, we've had some high profile kids change schools. And whenever that happens, I think it exacerbates the, the issue. The, the second thing that's changed is what we're doing here. Social media, I think, has, has brought the information out to the public. And so we're aware of more kids changing schools than ever, but essentially we're talking about the same number. Um, so what I think is important for everybody to, to understand and recognize there are several different types of transfers, and we have to sort those out along with the schools that the kids are at and determine what type of eligibility this transfer warrants. Anytime there's a valid change of residence, so this is number one, valid change of residence, you move to a new area with your entire family that you established your eligibility with, then you're most likely gonna get full eligibility at the new school. I say most likely because we still have pre-enrollment contact rules and undue influence, athletic motivation type issues that if those come into play, a student still could be ruled ineligible even with a valid change. But for the most part, that's the simplest one. The second one, the second type of transfer is a student who changes schools without a valid change. We live at the same address we lived with at the former school, but we decided to change schools for whatever reason. Now, does that include public to private, private to public? Same. Okay. Private and public, we treat the same, but that's a great question because it's also often a misnomer. Private and public schools have the same set of rules. So student changes schools, public to public, private to private, or, or otherwise, the student is subject to the sit-out period at the new school in any sport they played at the former school. So let's take a softball player at school A, transfers to school B without a valid change of residence. That student is likely gonna complete the sit out period before they're eligible to compete. Now, there's a couple, a couple legs to that. If they choose to play at the JV level, then they can start right away. Does that start the clock though on their sit out period? So if they only play JV all year long, there is no sit out period. Okay. Sit out period only applies to varsity competition. So if you 
choose that route, you can't play varsity that year in that sport. Okay. So that has to be understood. But if you choose to play varsity, complete the sit-out period, it's a date that is essentially 50% of the season from the first day of practice to the last day of the regular season. It often is not 50% of the games because there's two weeks of practice time at the mm-hmm. beginning. So it probably equates to about 40 to 50% of the number of contests for a team. So that's the second type of transfer. The third type would be if a student athlete has a hardship. And we have a very defined hardship. Um, but essentially, if, if a student has, if there's a divorce in the family that's caused the transfer, if there's a court ordered change of custody, or if there's a documented safety incident at the school, those it, with with the proper documentation qualify as a hardship and so a student would not have to complete the sit out period if, if that's the circumstances so as you can imagine I, I've given you a, the one minute view of that but we have to evaluate each one and, and what's often understood by misunderstood by the public is well how come that student's eligible right away but my son or daughter has to sit out well, there's a different circumstance, and, and, and that is the school's job and the family's job to put all that information out there. Then we discuss those with the schools and determine the eligibility. So that's the, 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 the quick version of it. So the quick version to me brings up already a ton of questions, and I'll just say the first one is, is there a place where people can find all of this actually written out? Is, is that on your website? It is on our website. It's in what's called our green book, is our set of bylaws. But I, you know, it's a, it's a big book, and so I, I would. I've seen it. it. It is legitimately huge. <laughs> I would encourage parents, students. Our athletic directors are well informed. The questions need to start with the AD. So the first line of contact should be the AD at the school that you're leaving, or the school that you're going to. The school that you're going to. Great okay. question. No transfer process can start until the student is enrolled at the new school. Okay. So once they're enrolled, go see the athletic director. Go find out who it is and ask the questions of him or her that, that you want answered, they are going to be well informed. But if there's a problem with that, if, if there's a transition at the school in the position, if it's summer and they're not there, we're always open to calls and, and, and talk to parents all the time yeah. and, and are happy to do that. I feel like my second question sort of isn't really a question but a clarification. You mentioned the, the age of social media. I feel like sometimes things can spread like such wildfire, including the perception that you are the only person sitting here with a gavel going, you get to go to that school, you don't. You, it, It's not that though, It's there's a whole committee and team of people to, to making the, these sort of clarifications, correct? So so let's start with this, Christian. Our bylaws, everything we do, I, I'm, I'm charged with upholding our bylaws and following our rules, enforcing them. And But those rules are all established by our schools. Our, our schools are all represented in San Diego and at the state level. And, and so I don't make these rules up. We, we decide them together. We're a grassroots organization. Rules are changed by schools. Mm-hmm. So we adopt this set of rules. And then my office does evaluate each circumstance. John Labita, assistant commissioner, he handles the bulk of transfers. Uh, we work together on transfers that are, that are complicated, complex, that may have some issues we need to work through. Um, We work with our school athletic directors from the former and the current schools because our goal is to get kids on the field or in the pool or in the gym. We want kids to play. You want the best competition out there possible to represent our section. We do. And and we know what it means to a student athlete to compete. And and so that is important to us. That is our goal to get kids participating. But we have to be consistent with how we apply our rules too. You mentioned important to you guys to help get the student athletes out there. This is this is going to be a whole separate second podcast, so be on the look for it. But in just a minute, give us sort of the history of the, between you and John Labetta, as you mentioned, the assistant commissioner, and the rest of this office. There's some really deep rooted ties to San Diego. No, no question, we're we're at, we're coaches at heart. We're we were athletes here in the San Diego section. Um, I attended and coached at Helix High School. And, uh, so but, you have more CIF championships than me. It's just going to be an unsa- <laughs> it's going to be an unspoken thing through the rest of this podcast. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> so I worked in the Grossmont district. I worked in the Sweetwater district, and and uh, have coached baseball and football in the San Diego section. John coached at Sarah High School in San Diego. Was also at La Costa Canyon, and and so I think we're a good mix. And I'm the east and the south, and John's the north and the, and the central part of San Diego. And uh, yeah, we're 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 tied to San Diego. We we John coached it for 
20 some years. I coached for 10. We've been teachers, we've been athletic directors, and, and now we're here in this office. So really what, I'm, what I think we're trying to sit here and say is that CIF is much more representation of San Diego than I think people realize, is that you guys are trying to reflect a very democratic process of we get together all the athletic directors, we get together with the principals, we hear from the state, and you're just the intermediary that is here uh, making this all happen. Any final notes you want to say on, on the transfer questions, process, debates? I would, uh, I'd like to say this. Yeah. It, it is extremely important that parents, before making a decision to transfer, understand the potential ramifications and our rules and how they apply. Uh, often, we get people who are either have misinterpreted the rules or have been given bad information. Uh, so talk to a knowledgeable person, call us, get the information before you make a decision to transfer so that your son or daughter is not in a situation that, that you were not planning for. Um, it's important, people often don't know there's transfer rules and, and it's the same throughout California. So I think that really the big thing that like, like he said at the beginning of all this is what we're trying to do here is provide a bridge, provide a gap, provide some common knowledge and some help to you out there, the sports fan, the, the parent, the player, the athlete, the whoever, and, and help give CIF a little bit more centralized voice to reach you guys. So Jerry, thank you so much. Or do I have to call you Mr. Commissioner? Jerry works perfect. Okay, perfect. So if you see him out there, you can you can say Jerry, you can say Mr. Commissioner, however Absolutely. good dude you are at approaching that. But uh, we're going to try and introduce you to everybody in this office and, and their opinions, their thoughts, their beliefs on San Diego high school sports, because that's what we're all about. It's like you said, we are all about seeing the best possible product. And, you know, just as a small little in parentheses, we like seeing things like Tory Pines and LCC being San Clemente. We like seeing San Diego uh, well represented out there in, in, the, in, the, in, in the world of high school sports. Because I know that we're playing teams from all over the country now with, with some of the right. top level programs here right. in, in San Diego. So this is the first one. There's going to be a lot more. We're going to be coming at you guys every single week with a new installment of information. The best thing for you to do to follow up on this is go to the website. You want to tell them where they can find you guys? Yeah, our website is cafsds.org. We're going to include a link to that with this podcast and everything else, but that is really a great way for you guys to actually... I mean, it has all of the schedules and results from all the sports. It has where you can get in contact with all them. Like you said, it has the green book, which we can more or less call the holy bible of high school regulations, rules, it and is. information. Uh, so power rankings are also there. The power website. rankings are there, and that is a that that might be a whole nother. That's a that's I, a whole I, twenty. Session. Oh my goodness, you would think that 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 alone is a bigger conspiracy than uh, <laughs> than anything else is the collusion that goes on to disrespect one school or another or something but, like that. But it's, you know, it's all right there to see, Christian. So that, and, that's and, the best thing about it. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll provide you guys links with all that to all that because there's a lot of great stuff being produced in this office that, that we're going to help uh, provide. And also, I'll be back next week with Ron Marquez to help round about the other sports. We're going to do water polo, tennis, uh, volleyball, field hockey, cross. I'm excited about cross country finally because that is a sport that I have not been able to crack into. Right. So we've got all that coming to you guys from the CIF offices. For Christian Pedersen, Commissioner Jerry Schneep, thank you very much for sitting in the office for the first one.